Kipling's athletic, yeah. And he's a gifted performance artist, writer. He uses intonation, uh, pacing. Exaggerated facial expressions. He enraptures his audience. And uh, after all, he is the great grandson of Rudyard Kipling himself. Master storyteller about the common people and the, the gurus and the British Raj. Uh, yeah, he was the most famous storyteller in his day and um, born in Bombay. 1865, lived till 1936, and uh, he wrote fabulous tales about the characters on the Indian subcontinent, like Kim, his masterpiece, published in 1901, and he got his breakthrough. He sold his stories in, in pamphlets in Indian railway stations, <laughs> yeah, and uh, boy, did that ever catch on. Uh, his novel, The Man Who Would Be King, 19th century a tale set in these very mountains. The story is set in Chitral, and um, maybe you saw the movie with Sean Connery, The Man Who Would Be King, famous book, famous movie. And uh, this tribal area is going to be a pivotal uh, passage in the young Kipling's life as well as well. Uh, the common dynamic of these stories is that there's a soldier of fortune, a former military person, uh, a colonialist, and he sets up, for, up a private kingdom for himself. Uh, Lord Jim by Joseph Conrad. Another example, and this story is a hippie version of that dynamic. But instead of people getting killed all over the place, I mean, the man who would be king, uh oh, it is bloody. Uh, the characters just have more sex. <laughs> yeah. So this is a mild parody of the man who would be king and that whole dynamic. It's, if a hippie <laughs> to set up a kingdom, what would that look like? Well, this is what it, <laughs> Kipling's about to find out, yeah. Well, meanwhile, back at that uh, crumbling British colonial hotel, yeah, they got these big sort of uh, cane chairs, fan Turkish-style cane chairs, and, uh, and oh, whoops, one of those straight tourists spills his gin fizz cocktail. What? All over... His neatly ironed safari jacket. Why? He he hears and then sees a speck of an airplane. Stunned. That twelve seater Fokker mm -hmm, levels off over the Malacan Pass. It's going in. <laughs> The mountain weather is clearing. Kipling's going in. The man who would be queen. Well, uh, the young traveler, oh, it's fun being up in a plane. Um, looks down. Oh, there's a clock tower of old Peshawar. Yeah, oh, there, the British Council Library. Uh, Kiwani Kizi Bazaar. Oh, the street of the storytellers. Uh, Mm-hmm. It used to be, you know, the crossroads town on the Silk Road. And, uh, well, Kipling gets a twinge of sadness, uh, nostalgic yearning for those old days when the camel caravans rested here overnight. It's called the Han, H-A-N, a camel compound. They even had dentists for camels in there, water. And, and uh, yeah, through this Pataan gateway between Asia Minor and China. Mm -hmm. Be Beijing, yeah, the Forbidden City. 
camels bedded down for the night. Silk bundles, mercifully unloaded, bundles of spices, uh, rare furs. Uh, uh, and uh, these turban storytellers in the Kisa Kawani Bazaar, the street of the storytellers, telling wild tales about the hinterlands of India, Afghanistan, Chinese Turkestan, and uh, spontaneous uh, travelers' stories told by natural-born gifted storytellers. You know, how different. I mean, he just read the London newspaper on his way to the airport. Martin Luther King... Western civilization, insane. Um, and this is what Kipling feels too, is his destiny. Make a big storybook uh, from his true adventures. I'm in a true adventure right now. He, he's just going to become a, a wandering storyteller, a minstrel, a troubadour, and go from hippie scene to hippie scene, uh, relating fun stories about earth people. Yeah. Oh. 